Hey folks and welcome back to the Technivers channel. Today we are looking at what infill is the fastest in Kira, so stay tuned. Alright, so today's question is which infill is going to give us the fastest print time. Now, a couple things to consider here for this process. We're going to be taking a look at the print times only, not actually printing them, and the print time does vary depending on your machine, and that's not going to be exact. But we can get a good idea of estimated print time here, and that's what we're going for. So we have this large cube shape that is actually a primitive that we've just added to the side of this box. And the reason for that is to get a large volume of area that we can actually test our infill in. So we're going to go in, we're going to slice it at the same density that is, I think it's at 18%, yeah, 18%. And we're going to try every single one of these and compare the time and filament used. So filament should be pretty much exactly the same either way if it's getting that density correctly, but the time should vary slightly. And our goal is to see which one of these gives you the fastest print. So the first one we're gonna do is grid. Let's grab it and slice it. So our first result is in and the time for this giant box, 18% infill with the grid pattern is going to be 13 hours and 11 minutes. So let's put the pattern and the time up on the screen there. And we'll go ahead and slice for the next one. So the next pattern here is going to be lines. We'll see if this goes any faster. Thankfully, this is a large square object. It's computing rather quickly, so I shouldn't have to keep jump cutting the video here. Um, that one gave us time of 13.21. I'm making a note of this so I can put that up on the screen as well. And 126 grams again. So the next pattern is triangles. give it a second slice here so far the difference is about 10 minutes and that's pretty negligible considering the fact that it's going to be slightly different when you actually print it than that as well so here we have 13 hours and 10 minutes so triangle seems to shave one minute off of our print time on this object so 13 10 and again 126 grams which is we were expecting those numbers to all line up that makes sense well, let's try try a hexagon the further we get down here some of these might start taking a little bit longer to slice and process but it shouldn't be too difficult and it should still go pretty quickly um, next is try hexagon we're on here And it is looking like this one is going to finish and give us time of 13 hours, 12 minutes. So that is the third quickest so far. And obviously we are at 126 grams again. So the accuracy of the infill percentage seems to be pretty dead on so far. Let's try the cubic method. Hit slice one more time. And that's going fairly quickly. 13 hours and 12 minutes. So the same as trihexagon. And the weight is exactly the same as expected, so no variation there. Let's try cubic subdivision. And I think that when we're done with this, we're going to get a little bit more complicated of an object that doesn't have such even edges, and we'll try this all again. And with cubic subdivision, it looks like we're saving quite a bit of time. This one is actually coming in at 12 hours and 43 minutes, making it our fastest so far. Oddly, it is also coming in at 117 grams. So using less filament with the cubic subdivision and also printing faster. That's an interesting observation. Let's go ahead and try octet. Slice that up. And we'll see what we get for a result. I wasn't expecting that from cubic subdivision. 
13 hours, 16 minutes, so not bad. Pretty much around our average here. And again, using 126. So next on the list, we have quarter cubic. Let's slice that up. Again, once we switch to a more complicated object, it's probably going to take longer to slice. Um, 13, 15. And uh, let's see the next one. Still 126 grams. Concentric. This should be interesting since it's just square shaped. And uh, should actually be pretty quick. 12 hours, 7 minutes. So this one is our fastest so far. And it is using 121 grams. So that's interesting. It's very interesting. And for the next one, it's going to be zigzag. Let's go ahead and slice that. And we'll punch that up on the monitor here. See what it gives us for zigzag. Thirteen fourteen. And oof. We're using a hefty 131 grams there. So that one's actually taking longer and costing us more filament. That's an interesting observation as well. Let's take a look at cross. Cross is the one after zigzag here. We're just going in order. And let's see what we get for a result with this pattern so so far by far concentric is the fastest which makes sense because it's not really having any travel moves oof cross is taking 15 hours and 56 minutes it is also using 123 grams which is lower than our average but uh, variation there is strange to see. It means we're not getting the exact percentage that we're going for in relativity to the other infills. But that's not really a big deal. Let's check out cross 3D. Very similar, but then again, not to cross. So cross 3D. And man, I'm glad this is going so fast. Looks like 1525, so slightly faster than the other method, but not as fast as some of the others. We're using 120 grams, so again, even less, which is an interesting thing. Last one we're going to try here is gyroid. We're going to slice it on gyroid, and then we're going to try a few other things that we find interesting here. So. Let's let this process finish up and we'll just kind of see where we're at here. Okay, okay gyroid is obviously taking the longest to calculate. Um, I think that that is uh, probably pretty normal. It is a complicated pattern. It's, it's interesting. It looks cool but uh, I could see it taking a while. So doesn't take as long to print though as some of the other patterns at 14 hours and 59 minutes. But it is using 127 grams, which makes it only one of two items using more than the regular amount of filament. So 127, slightly over average. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do was go out and grab a better model here. Alright, now what we've done is brought in a slightly, well, a very much more complicated model. There's a lot less infill to fill here, and yet we are going to see how it calculates out all of this. We are going to test out the time difference between, I think, our fastest, which was concentric. So we'll try that first. Infill with concentric we'll slice that and see what it's at on a complicated model and 
this is going to take slightly more slice time. So you may see a few more jump cuts here, but hey, we like to play around. Um, I think after Concentric, we will test that against its slowest, which I believe was the cross mode at 1556. Now, the reason these tests are going to be slightly different um, in their results, obviously they're going to be way different in their print speed because they're completely different objects, but the reason you're going to get slightly different answers for which one is fastest is because of the shape of the object. Concentric prints really fast on a large flat object like that because like I said it doesn't have to travel it just continues itself around in a singular pattern. Once you get to an object with a lot of jumping like this there's really no advantage to concentric so it's kind of mitigated and I don't think that it will necessarily be slower than our slowest one, but it'll definitely be more comparable in speed to some of these other versions. So uh, it is taking forever to slice. So how about that jump cut? Okay, so for our treble clef model in a concentric mode, we are looking at 50 grams of filament and nine hours and 37 minutes. So before we jump over and compare that with the slowest, let's jump over and compare it to the next fastest. So Concentric was followed the closest by 13 by zigzag here. Actually, let's do this. Let's try triangles because that one was actually faster. And insert another jump cut here. Ooh, and mysteriously, the uh, triangle's just getting whooped here. And being left in the dust with time of 10.45 and using 54 grams. So, uh, okay, so let's see the time difference between that and the slowest, which we decided was the cross. Pattern. So cross and slice and uh, for one last time I will leave you and return after these long long few moments. And uh, there we have it. Results right before your very eyes. 11 hours 29 minutes for the cross mode and that is again the longest of the three that we've tested. So. 11 hours and 29 minutes and it is using 58 grams. So you are seeing pretty much a consistent scale here as far as the triangles and concentric both being pretty fast. There weren't any that ended up between them just for the sake of rounding this out. Since triangles became slower than concentric, I want to try one of the other ones that was uh, also slower than triangles but fast near the speed of concentric and see if one of those, I think the next closest was 1310, 1311, so grid mode. And this will be the last one that we do. Let's jump over and try this out and see if we get a faster result than triangles or, or else, or otherwise. So I'm just, I do it for curiosity's sake. The whole reason I made this video is because I'm constantly debating which of these I think would be faster in my head. But the fact of the matter is, it kind of turns out to be on a per model basis. And as you can see here, it depends on the shape of the model. And a lot of it has to do with how many gaps there are in the actual shell of the model itself. Say, from here to here to here to here to here to here. Because those are all travel moves, and travel moves take time and they usually involve retraction which takes time and they usually involve priming after retraction which takes time so these are simple things that you wouldn't think would multiply out the time of your print speed but they really really do and having the best infill pattern for the purpose is one of those things that you really want to try and nail there you have it 10 hours and 39 minutes so that is definitive proof that the fastest isn't necessarily going to be the same for each model that you print. It's going to be different depending on the area and the separation in the model, as I said, between those travel moves. So 10 hours, 39 minutes for grid mode, which is, as you can see, a lot faster in cross mode, but also faster than triangles, which was one of the far quicker ones. Uh, and I'm very, very disappointed 
that that is how that came out so um, it's just kind of weird to me that concentric is always the fastest then again like I said there is no travel move interior to the actual pattern itself so this is going to give you the fastest infill on in pretty much every case so uh, the definitive answer is concentric go with concentric um, let's try looking at cubic subdivision I know we said we were done but I want to see one more we're going to look at cubic subdivision here because that was really really close it was second to concentric and I want to see if it's still in second place so let's go ahead we will do this one more time and slice seems to be going pretty quick and it's stalled out I'll see you in a second and there you have it it's concentric for the win when it comes to speed concentric is the fastest infill pattern that you can get not only is it the fastest but it is going to be the cheapest on infill in almost all cases the cross 3d case with the normal print was a one gram cheaper on the filament but then again if you're going for a specific percentage of infill the closer you can get to that percentage the better so that's not necessarily a good thing uh, this isn't really to say anything about the durability of pieces printed with particular infill. That is a whole different story for a whole different day. I suspect concentric infill in most cases of being slightly inferior or weaker than most other infills because they don't have any cross support. They basically just follow the object's shape. So if you have a large cylinder or tube, the interior infill is going to be simply a spiral around the inside which would be easily crushable from pressure around the outside of the circle. So the thing to keep in mind here is what you're using it for. In most cases, if you're doing prototyping or rapid design, definitely go with concentric infill because it will shave time and plastic off of your print. That's going to be it for this one, guys. Technivorous. We'll see you in the next video. If you have any Kira questions, drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a like on this video and smash that subscribe button so you can be subscribed to the channel. And we have the notification button as well. If you ring that, you'll get notified every time we post new videos. I do quite a few of these videos. And I have a different playlist called Kira Questions where I answer everybody's questions about Kira. If you'd like to know more, there is a card over there. Click on that and it'll bring you to the playlist. You'll be able to see all 